The second thing is that Krauss says nothing about uh, uh, the Big Bang coming out of nothing. Uh, and he, it's, admittedly, he comes clean in, on about six pages from the end of his book, and I don't know whether Richard has read it that far because he gave it uh, a, a foreword. Uh, what he says is, is uh, what, he, what Richard is describing as nothing is a sort of a, a mixture of particles and perhaps uh, a vacuum with electromagnetic uh, forces working on it. That's uh, what Krauss is talking about under the heading of nothing. And there's a very good uh, review of this in the New York uh, Times, not a pro-religious paper at all, uh, where the, Krauss is absolutely um, denied and, and demolished, although, uh, uh, especially by his, his supporters claiming that he says things come out of nothing. He, he doesn't say that. It's okay, a matter, you can, quickly respond to you that can, you can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever mm. it is, it's very, very simple. <laughs> and why is that funny? <laughs> well, I think it's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> you can, you can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever mm. it is, it's very, very simple. The nothing that Lawrence Krauss is talking about, whether or not it's what a naive person would conceive as nothing or what a sophisticated physicist would consider to be nothing, it is going to be something much, much simpler than a creative intelligence. It is going to be something much, much simpler. Why is that funny? <laughs> What Mr. Krauss has done here is he has equivocated on the term nothingness. He has, he has changed the meaning of the word nothingness. When philosophers and theologians ask the question, why is there something rather than nothing? By nothing, they meant non-being. What Mr. Krauss means by nothing is a state described by quantum physics. It's, it's a quantum physical state. And that is not nothing in the philosophical sense of the word. The vacuum state described in quantum physics is a roiling sea of energy uh, go governed by physical laws and having a rich physical structure. It is far from being nothing in the um, philosophical sense. So what he's done here is simply change the subject. Instead of asking, why is there something rather than non-being, he's asked, why is there something rather than just the quantum state? And then he says the universe originated out of the quantum state. But he doesn't answer the question, well, why is there a quantum state rather than nothing? What's the origin of that? Why does it exist rather than nothing? So he hasn't really addressed at all the original question. He's just changed the subject. It would be like a philosophy student I heard about once who uh, on his uh, philosophy exam was posed the question, what is time? What is time? And he answered the question by saying, time is a weekly news magazine. <laughs> well, that's true. That is true, but only if you change the definition of the word, you see. You've changed the subject. You've equivocated. And that's exactly what Krauss has done. Uh, he leaves unexplained the origin of the quantum vacuum. Uh, he never addresses the original question, which is why is there something rather than literally nothing at all, non-being. And uh, now he says that science is going to solve metaphysical problems, which shows he simply doesn't understand the metaphysical question in the first place. So as I say, this is really uh, all very elementary, but it's, it's discouraging to see such sophisticated physicists falling into these traps of logical fallacies like equivocation without even realizing that they're doing so.